Hi everybody, this is Michael McAvoy, and I'd like to talk to you today about blood test interpretation. I've been posting a number of videos and articles about blood test interpretation, uh, and I want to inform you once again that on Thursday, August 2nd, 2012, I will be giving a two-hour PowerPoint presentation on blood test interpretation 101 in Chicago at Whole Body Fitness Chicago, 6125 North Cicero Avenue. Please go to the Facebook page to learn more about this event. What I'd like to talk to you today about is all of the different factors and blood chemistry factors that are on a basic blood test that we are going to cover in my presentation. So uh, there's so many different valuable pieces of information that can be obtained from a basic blood test, but how do we interpret them? I want to start out by saying that blood test interpretation is for everybody, not just doctors, not just healthcare practitioners or professionals, but personal trainers, lay people, just the ordinary person that wants to know more information about how to interpret their blood test so that they can improve their health and use nutrition to improve their health. So there's three primary parts to a blood test. The uh, metabolic panel, the lipid panel, and then the CBC or complete blood count. So what I'm going to talk about today is just an overview of all of these basic blood chemistry factors in just a very short uh, sentence or two about what these blood chemistry factors are looking at specifically. So let's start with the metabolic panel. So the metabolic panel provides the basic chemistry output of the body. It's giving us feedback, it's giving us information about all of the major metabolic activity that's happening in the chemistry in the blood. So, First of all, uh, glucose is the primary sugar that's in the bloodstream that regulates energy and all cells of the body burn glucose. So this is typically the first thing that you see on a blood test. Then we see uric acid. Uric acid is an antioxidant, but it's also implicated in, if it's elevated, it's implicated in, in inflammatory conditions such as gout, possibly cardiovascular disease. And then the next factors on a blood test are uh, creatinine estimated glomerular filtration rate, and blood urea nitrogen, or BUN. And these three factors are renal indicators, kidney indicators, or at least markers, uh, initial markers for kidney function. But of course, uh, they can be used to determine other things, and their activity can be used to determine muscle metabolism, protein breakdown, protein synthesis, protein intake, especially blood urea nitrogen. It's a major indicator of protein metabolism to see if you're consuming enough protein in your diet. The next set of indicators that we see are the electrolytes on the metabolic panel. And the primary electrolytes are sodium, potassium, chloride, CO2, or otherwise known as bicarbonate, calcium, and phosphorus. And so all of these electrolytes are essential for maintaining the proper electrical conductivity of all the cells of the body. And if you watch the previous video that I put out, it was about electrolyte activity and how electrolytes, and electro, aberrations in electrolytes have a number of implications for a number of essential physiological processes such as hydration, adrenal issues, and digestion, not to mention all kinds of other activity as well. The next set of factors on a blood test are looking at um, metabolic enzymes that are in the body. The primary metabolic enzymes on a blood test are, in order, usually ALT, AST, GGTP, LDH, and uh, alkaline phosphatase, or ALP. So all of these blood chemistry factors can reveal a lot of information about liver function, possible liver obstruction or biliary stasis, um, liver cell damage. Um, ALT and AST are specific to the liver. ALT more than AST. AST is for cardiovascular uh, inflammation if it's elevated. Uh, LDH is also a metabolic enzyme that can be used to assess liver function, liver damage. Uh, GGTP, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, is a metabolic enzyme that's specific, specifically looking at liver function. 
If it's high, it can indicate uh, biliary dysfunction. If it's low, it could indicate magnesium deficiency. GGTP could also indicate glutathione deficiency if it's decreased. So there's a lot of information about that you can obtain by looking at metabolic enzymes. The, the last set of factors on a basic blood test are the total bilirubin and the serum iron. And the bilirubin is, of course, a waste product of hemoglobin, and it's excreted via the liver through the gallbladder and the bile. So if, it's, if the bilirubin, the total bilirubin is elevated, could also indicate liver uh, stasis, biliary stasis, biliary, biliary obstruction, problems with the liver clearing toxins and clearing uh, uh, excessive hormones that are being excreted through the bile. Bile's got to flow and it's got to flow through the gallbladder. And if the total bilirubin is elevated, that could be an indication that the gallbladder is not pumping out enough bile or there's an obstruction in the biliary duct. Then the serum iron, of course, iron is essential for hemoglobin and oxygen transport. And so if the iron is high, it could indicate liver dysfunction, it could indicate iron toxicity, could, ind could be a possible indicator of hemochromatosis, although other factors would need to be looked at. Uh, and then also iron could be used if, if to obviously for uh, iron deficient anemia if the iron is low. Other factors should be considered as well. So those are the basic factors on a chem panel, on a metabolic panel, everything I just talked about. The second panel is the lipid panel, and the lipid panel is comprised of the total cholesterol, the LDL or low-density lipoprotein, HDL high-density lipoprotein, VLDL very low-density lipoprotein, and also the triglyceride score. So all of these are the lipids of the, of the body that are in the blood. And the lipids play critical functions in your body's physiology and your health. So for example, cholesterol is essential for steroidal hormone synthesis, sex hormones, adrenal hormones, uh, cholesterol is essential as an anti-inflammatory sort of type of an antioxidant. Uh, cholesterol is needed for digestion and for the synthesis of bile by the liver. So um, obviously there's been a lot of talk about high cholesterol, but there also needs to be a, a major discussion on the, the dangers and risks of low cholesterol. Uh, the triglyceride score is the fat, are the fats in the bloodstream which serve as a source of fuel to all the muscles of the body, including the heart. And uh, high levels of, of triglycerides could be associated as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Low levels of triglyceride could indicate catabolic activity, could indicate that the muscles are not using enough fats properly. Uh, so these are the, all the factors on the lipid panel that are significant. And then finally, the CBC, or complete blood count, is a listing of all of the different factors that are immune-related, uh, as well as the hemo concentrations, or the hemo factors, hemoglobin, hematocrit. So on the, the CBC, there's the, the white blood cell count, or WBC, which tells, tells you the total... Uh, <coughs> the total count of the white cells, the immune cells. The RBC, which is the red blood cell count, which indicates the red blood cells in the blood, which transport oxygen to the tissues. Then you have hemoglobin and hematocrit. Then you have the, the number of other factors, MCV, MCH, MCHC, RDW. These factors are used to assess um, the, uh, basically they could be used to assess anemic tendencies, as well as specific factors regarding red blood cells, the, the, uh, the size of red blood cells, the concentration and percentage of certain red blood cells. And so they can all be used to assess various types of anemic tendencies, possibly dehydration as well in some instances. And then we have um, uh, the specific breakdown of, of the white blood cells, the body's immune cells, uh, the lymphocytes, the uh, eosinophils, the basophils, then we have the total platelets, the platelet count, and uh, I, think I'm, I think that's it. And so all of those are used to assess different, different activity of the immune cells, so they can be used, helpful to, to be used to assess allergies, food sensitivities, uh, immune types of reactions. If the, like if the lymphocytes are high, the lymphocytes could indicate that there's increased anabolic activity if the lymphocytes are low. It could indicate that there's oxidative free radical activity that's taking place. 
the white cells could also be indicative of parasitic infections, of gut-related dysbiosis. So uh, these are the primary factors on the CBC. So this is a basic, basic breakdown of all the chem factors that we're going to be discussing, that I will be discussing on uh, Thursday, August 2nd, Whole Body Fitness Chicago, 6125 North Cicero Avenue. And I hope you can attend. In this presentation, for sale, I'm going to have a spiral binder on all of these blood chemistry factors and specific reference ranges that I use in my practice as a nutritional consultant and also a detailed explanation of what these chem factors are and functional relationships that exist between blood chemistry factors so that you're going to be able to take your own blood test, look at it, use this manual, use the information that I'll be giving you and be able to pick apart your blood test and figure out what the best course of action should be from a nutritional standpoint. So I highly recommend coming to this presentation. It's going to be fantastic, very educational, very engaging. Uh, Thursday, August 2nd in Chicago. So thank you for watching. If you have more questions about my consulting practice or um, ways that you can get in contact with me, please go to my website, www.metabolichealing.com. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more next time.